right, welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Make sure you subscribe, give us a like, ring the bell, and follow us on social media. Today, my guest, director and vocalist, Jimmy Romero. How you doing, Jimmy? <laughs> Good to have you on the show, my friend. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me, man. Thanks oh, for... it's my pleasure, man. We've been yeah. talking about it for a little bit, and I'm uh-huh. glad you were able to make some time. And uh, yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, I've been I've been seeing you over at Rockstar Bar doing yeah. all kinds of cool shit. And uh, yeah, what else have you been up to lately? You got a you got a new movie coming out, right? Right. So, we have a um, my band the Helen Backs, we have a movie that's basically it's a concept album and basically the movie is telling the story as well, like, you know, visual besides the audio that's on the, the record. In fact, oh wait, 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 I totally forgot. So, I brought you not only just, whoops, one. Ah, well, I think I grabbed the wrong, no, I didn't, did I? Yeah, I did. <laughs> okay, I was supposed to bring you all three. No. We have three, we have three, CD, three CDs out, but I brought you one and three. So this nice. is one, and this is three. There you go. And so those are for you. Nice, have, man. Uh, also, hold on. Where is it? Here it is. And a t-shirt. Wait. Here it is. Oh, here's the, oh, here's we the got second. the third one there. That's the second one. Oh, the That's second the one? second one, yeah. This is the second one. So, and then uh, which one of these is the first one? Uh, Vampires in the Desert. This is the first one. I'm going to put them up to the camera. All right. And then, yeah. And, that's, yeah. and then look, we got the, the new shirt for you. Oh, dope. I'll be wearing that. It's, That's awesome. There you go. There's that. Thank you. I come man. with gifts. I love gifts. <laughs> the Helen Backs. Badass. I'll be wearing this all over the place, man. Thank you so much. For sure, for sure. And then, yeah, check it out. So it's uh, number one here, the Helen Backs, Vampires in the Desert. Mm-hmm. And then what do you got here? Harsh Environment. Mm-hmm. And... This just Helen backs three. Yep. Yeah. That's it. Bam. Thank you so much, Jimmy. I yeah. really appreciate it. And that. you know what's cool about this is let's see, let's go over f- one. Like first one has uh we have some Sean Coe is on on it. At least like four songs, I wanna say. Oh, I love Sean. Yep. Todd Kearns is uh, featured on that one also. Oh bad dude. Todd Kearns and Chris Brady are on uh Harsh Environment too as well. They're on a song called Ugly Day on that one. And then uh this one on three, Todd Kearns is also on this one. Uh Love Breeds Love. He's on that one. And I think he did some backups on one of the songs, but I forget. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, he did some, I forgot. We, me and Todd are always in the studio together. So it's like, it's kind of, I kind of lose track of what he's on. And then also, um, uh, on three, Barry, um, Barry Barnes from count 77. Oh, bad, bad, badass bass player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on, he's on, a, um, a good number of tunes on that one. And then also, um, uh, Johnny Gildkris has played some piano on um, a town a uh, town called Home, um, and he did an amazing job. He's a great pianist. He's he's one of those like he's multi. He plays everything. Like you know, he plays sax, like violin. I he played cello. Like this guy besides guitar, you know, and keys. So. Wow. Yeah, Johnny's pretty pretty talented. He's. Great. I didn't know he played all that stuff. Yeah, great guy. I always liked the saxophone. I wish I would have taken the time to learn how to play that instrument. It's such right. an awesome instrument. Right. Oh. So. I know my brother learned how to play it for a little while. But yeah, that's cool, man. And mm-hmm. Todd Kearns, that's amazing. Yeah. He's a fantastic talent, man. He's still he's out with Slash still, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a, you know, he's they just finished a record and it's going they're going to release it, I believe. I want to say February of next year. They're going to on Gibson Records too as well cuz Gibson oh, dope. Yeah, Gibson's their Gibson started their own label. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, Gibson Records, huh? Yeah. Let me look them up. See who yeah. else is on that. I, uh, no, I think Slash is the only one right now. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So, oh, good for Slash. Yeah. That's a hell of an honor to be the first one on the label, man. Right. 
But yeah, Slash always does amazing shit, man. Yeah. I love the Snake Pit and Velvet Revolver and all that stuff, yeah. man. And of course, you know, GNR. But yeah. yeah, that's dope, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, cool, man. So yeah, so the the movie you're doing is a uh, you were saying it's it's part of the album that you're releasing? Yeah, it's a part of the Helen Backs 3 and uh it basically, you know, tells the story that's told that's told in uh the CD. You know, oh, dope. So, concept and, album, huh? Yeah, that's it's, pretty cool. And you got, uh, you got the trailer for it. We pulled up before we uh, pushed record here. Right. Let's play. Let's check that out, man. Okay. Click. Clack. Ooh. Mm, it's rated R. <laughs> <laughs> So what brings you to Las Vegas? I was actually headed to California, but then my transmission went out and I didn't have the 24 to fix it. So here I am. Back with Captain Sabaho, huh? Sean will meet you at the location tomorrow at 10. Better be there. What did Tom say about the car? It's almost done. Wow. Will you tell him that I'll have to balance you? Why are you doing this anyways? I thought you were over her. Polly's on my God, that had to take forever to braid your hair like that, man. <laughs> I can't get an evidence locker until the 29th. If I get any sooner, it's all going to blow up in our face. You have a pump? No, I was going to ask you for one. Well, where's Frankenstein at? Don't call him that. Don't be so touchy. I'm just fucking around. Put it on your tab? Sure, Polly. Speak of tab. Where's that cop friend of yours? I can't be the middleman in this deal anymore. I can't fucking do it. Alex. Alex. My CI Alex. Hey. I, I don't have any cash. I didn't make shit tonight. It's a tip. Fuck you, I just met your fucking bitch of a wife. She was waiting at the door when I got home. I thought you were getting a divorce, you fucking asshole. I am. Get the fuck out of here! Get out! What if I told you I was getting a bunch of money? Would you go to California with me? Come on, baby. Baby, don't let me. Don't you. Don't you. That's awesome, man. Thanks, man. I so it. is that going to be a full-length movie, like 90 minutes? or? Yeah. Oh, wow, dude. That's so much work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's taking, a, it's taking a minute, and it's, and it's COVID isn't helping. Yeah, I bet. Know? It's not helping much. But, yeah, I mean, like, when I, was, I refused to just stop production and doing anything that I was doing, I really refused to. And... Uh, you know, and then soon as they started, you know, allowing people, you know, not wearing masks and this and that, because uh, SAG, you know, has their own, you know, their rules of like, say, for instance, uh, you know, you have to, um, you know, when you're not acting, just you have to stay six six feet apart with your mask on. And so there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, rules to that. But soon as we are allowed to be in one room and be able to act and that's when I went forward and, you know, you know, booked out all the locations and casted and did all of that great stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, great stuff. It's like, it's a lot of work. It's so much work, man. You it know, really I, is, but I dig it so much, man. I really do. It's like, I dig it as much as I, I love making records, you know, and it's, it's a different beast, but it's really, um, it's just what turns me on. And, and it's like, you know, the way I am and anyone who knows me, it's just like the way my soul is. My soul does not rest unless it's creating. And that's when it rests. And that's when it's yeah. at peace. You know, when it's creating, that's when it, you know, that's when it's at its best. So. 
That's fantastic. I mean, that's what we're here to do, you know, create. Right. This is like the creation space, man. You right. know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful gift we're given to come here for like 80 years and make up all kinds of shit we can make up. Hell yeah. And, um, <laughs> you know. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I've, 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 I've been getting into some filmmaking and everything like uh -huh. that myself. And uh, I can say firsthand it is a hell of an endeavor to get any kind of project off the ground, let alone completed and edited and like... Yeah, actually published and out there. So I mean, kudos to you, man. That's that's ridiculously yeah. difficult endeavor. Thank you. And uh, and and recording a whole record to go along with it, or vice versa, a movie right. to go along with a record, a record, a, a record alone. Yeah, it's like that's, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that that uh, Doc Ellis didn't have a hand in creating the whole. It was really his idea with the film. Oh, really? Yeah, he's. <laughs> you know, my friends think, <laughs> they go, uh, you know, because, I mean, I shoot film. I, there's another short film that I did also. Todd Kearns is in it. Zach, Zach uh, Throne is in it from... Oh, nice. You know, yeah, all the Sinners from, guys. Yeah, from, you know, Corey Taylor's band and Sinners and all that stuff. That's uh, right. He is in Corey Taylor's you know what? band now. Coey's in it. Sean Coey's in it, too, as well. Um, she's She she plays a small role in it. Um, but anyway... Um, you know, because they they just know how I am with film and video and, you know, the studio and stuff like that. And so Doc's idea was just like, yeah, we should. I, uh, You know, the thing was, it was just like, you know, we, we need to promote the record. What video, you know, should what song should we make a video out of, you know? And, and it was like, well, and Doc's all like, you know, pleasant doom. Or so they say. Or the, hell, let's just do them all. He goes, let's do them all. And then you put the story together and just do, do what you do. And do what you That's do. That's what he said. And that was it. <laughs> I'm just like, really? But, you know, it's like it's, it's kind of like the thing with me, though. It's just like don't, 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 don't spark because I'm going to turn it into a bonfire and, then the, and I'm just going to run with it. And that's what he did. He, he threw this little spark and I was like, that's a great idea. We should do that. <gasps> oh, ah, oh, oh. <laughs> make it a full feature. Oh, this and that. So, yeah. So we shot, we shot the, it's kind of, it's never been done before. It's the, the closest thing I could come to it is, I mean, it's kind of, we shot the live music videos of the whole record. And so the, the, the story, um, the story line, part of the storyline is, um, a girl gets stuck in Las Vegas. She was driving to California she breaks down in Las Vegas and she gets involved with, you know, a drug dealer and a, and a, and a dirty cop and she's stuck in between the middle of them. And she's just trying to get the hell out of Las Vegas, the dirty part of Las Vegas. She's trying to get out of that. It sure does get dirty. Okay? Yeah, it does, right? So, so, but she gets addicted to this, uh, this um, hallucinogenic. It's a dreamscape drug, and it's called uh, Wonderland. And so appropriate, right? So, so basically, during the story, it takes you in and out through through her little dreams, dreamscapes, and anyone who takes the drug. So therefore, the dreamscapes also weave into live music and really trippy type, you know, oh, that's scenes. Cool. So it's never been really done before. Like I, we were researching Doc, Al, I. We were all researching, like trying to find something close to it. And there really hasn't been a storyline that's kind of, not storyline, but the way the the music is going to move in and out of the, the film. And... Uh, it hasn't been done yet. We thought Sergeant Pepper's, but we were like, no, it's it's not it's not Sergeant Pepper's. And then we thought, well, maybe Purple Rain. We we're like, no. And then we're like, Song remains the same, no. Um, so we went through them all, Pink Floyd, all of them, you know. And it's just like we just, you know, even Tommy, you know, Tommy was, you know, but it, it's not. It's completely different, you know. So if you watch the trailer and then watch like one of the music videos, you can kind of get a gist of it, you know. But it's going to be different. It's going to be something that hasn't been done before, and it's really different. 
That's awesome. Yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing the whole thing. When does it come out? Well, right now we still have a couple more days of shooting and, you know, due to once again, you know, COVID and restrictions and stuff like that. We we got like I think we got like I want to say 3 days, but I'll say 4. Yeah. I uh, just to be safe. Realistically. Yeah. Um and uh you know, and uh you know, they they're very important scenes. They're and they have to be shot. So, you know, we're just waiting on, you know, the right time to do it. And we scheduled it actually at the end of this month, but then we had to reschedule it. Yeah. You know, so, you know. So. That's kind of been the status quo, man. You know, yeah. I've been I've been lining up a few music videos to shoot here and there. Yeah. And it keeps getting pushed and pushed. And, every you know, everyone's kind of like sketch about things. and, and Right. Uh, and, and it's just like, plus, you know, like say, for instance, you know, um, lo- locations, you know, yeah. when you're renting locations and getting permits and stuff like that, it all that all that stuff and all those rules come into play. So um, that's one thing you got to pay attention to, and and it slows down production. It really does. It's not like a, it's not a run and gun shoot. You know what I mean? Like like say for instance the short film that I shot a couple years ago, um, that was a run and gun shoot. You know, we were just running and gunning, you know, just like, you know, grabbing whatever locations we could, you know, shooting. Okay, let's go. We got it. You know. Yeah. Not like scheduling permits and yeah. getting together with the Screen Actors Guild and all that stuff. Yeah. It's just like, hey, you're my friends. Get in front of the camera for me for a second. Right. Right. That's how I, that's all I've ever done is that kind of stuff. I mean, it's just basically, you know, when, you know, when you, when you take it to that next level, it's just preparing you for the larger budget films, because what you do on a SAG you know, ultra budget, you know, or micro budget, you know, film, um, what you do there is the same thing you have to do on a larger scale. It's just more people to manage and, you know, you got to bring on, that's why there's so many, you know, assistant producers and, you know, ADs and stuff like that is because you got to quarterback all of this, you know, you got to quarterback all of these different personalities, Yeah. you know, and then scheduling is a trip too, you know, scheduling. It's like our cast is like maybe... I want to say our cast is about 12 to 15, you know, but, uh, but you know, it gets difficult. You know, I don't know if you noticed, but like uh, one of the, one of the drug dealers, uh, you know, kind of, um, I guess you would say one of his, his, his gang members or whatever, um, is actually Merv Douglas from Power Man 5000. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't notice that. Yeah, he was driving. Is that the guy with the big yeah, hair? Yeah, yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I love his hair. Yeah. And uh, like uh, Dion Williams is in there. He's a, co- a comedian from, uh, but he's an actor too as well, but he's a comedian in Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, we got, you know, even, I, I even, um, Hollywood Pablo. Hollywood Pablo was a, he was a part of um, um, a reality show. Uh, what is it? The Hamiltons and the Stewarts. Rod Stewart and George Hamilton. That, that there's okay. a reality show. Yeah. And he was a big, he was one of the main cast of that. And uh, we brought him in on a little, on a little scene there too. So, I mean, this, pretty, it's going to be interesting. That's so cool, man. Yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to checking it out, man. You right. already got a fan out of me. That's for sure. Thanks. Yeah, I uh, and so like when you're doing this whole process, are you renting cameras and and hiring camera guys? Do you have your own cameras? I rent my. I, well, actually, no, I don't. I don't like renting. Yeah. I, I mean, not at that scale. Like, say for instance, um, I own all my lenses and and my cameras and stuff like that. It just, you know, your fee can run up to the point where you're just like, wait a minute, I could have bought that camera. Oh yeah. You know, so. And then also at the same time, it's just like, okay, well, if you're not using like, if you can't afford the $30,000 lens, it's okay. It's totally okay because there's lenses out there for two grand that you can purchase and take your time and shoot with. And I mean, I found a fabulous lens. It's called a, uh, what is it? Oh man, I can't think of it right now. Mad- <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a cinematic lens. It's called something magic. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I found it for camera B and, um, and it's a, it's about 350, you know, and it's a great lens. Um, so I got it for camera B and, um, thought that, you know, so I used that on, 
any B shoots, you know, camera B stuff. And so. what kind of bodies are you using for your cameras, man? Uh, Sony A seven threes. Oh, nice. Yeah, That's and so, but we're still shooting at twenty four frames. Okay. You know, because uh, I really like the warm film. I don't uh, film look. I really not a fan of like you know these cameras that are going up to you know 60 frames a second yeah, and all that yeah and like 6k and like yeah. they're just it's too much yeah it's too much for the eyes to actually digest to me and it's just like this i mean that's my personal opinion um as an audience member i like to you know it to be you know you you, you to be able to sit back and relax versus you get these intense you know, images thrown at you, they're just like, oh, kind of, kind of takes you out of the moment. I, this is what I, ex my personal experience. Yeah. Plus you handling know. all that storage whenever you're up in like the 4K, 6K oh, range. Man. I mean, all the files are massive and the processing power that your computers require to edit it all, right. it becomes a real nuisance. Yeah. yeah. So, so that, are you shooting in uh, 1080p then? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 1080p for sure. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, it just looks better for, I mean, I, it's the look I want, you know, yeah. not, not every director wants that, but you know, I do, you know, if I'm doing like, like say for instance, I just shot a 4k music video, um, last month and, uh, they, it was huge, huge files, you know? Oh yeah. And, uh, um, the client wanted the, the footage which is cool. It was in the agreement, you know, give him all the footage and stuff like that. And he was like, wow, it's like taking four hours to download this. Oh, and yeah. I'm like, yeah. Uh, you need a two terabyte hard drive just for the raw footage, man. For real. Yeah. For real. So. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm getting ready to uh, start doing 4K as well for some of the stuff on the YouTube channel. We do like outdoorsy stuff. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, yeah, I need a whole new computer. I'm buying a new new computer system just to do the video editing because, like, the system I use to do all this video editing, right? It handles 1080 no problem, but the second I throw 4K files in, and it's just like lagging it's so like, hard. You can't. You can get the renders done, but you like right. you can't edit with any kind of clarity of like what you're actually where you're actually cutting and doing the work. Right. And it's like, and that's a fucking supercomputer I built, you know. Yeah. And, and, but it's just not enough. Yeah, yeah, it's it's crazy how much processing and the graphics cards that are required to 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 dive into that 4K world. Yeah, I'm like at a nine nine core processor with 124 gigs of RAM. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's what I'm working with. That's and crazy yeah. power. Yeah, I mean, it was it was you know it was it's it's what I do and it trust me like it just it saves me such a headache because because it's frustrating when you're waiting on a computer. Oh yeah, and and uh, it's really frustrating. So now it's just like, I mean, I had to build it, but it was fine after. I mean, probably after I built it, and you know, it was after that. I mean, I love the thing. Like I love it. Like um, we call it the beast, just because it just tears through. Yeah, it's that a is be a beast. <laughs> it's a beast. Jeez. <laughs> so what do you build your computers out of, man? Like I'm a big fan of doing the Asus stuff and. Uh, you know, I, I run Intel processors. Uh -huh. uh, it's an Intel. Is it an Intel? It's they're an just, they're fantastic. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. And then. Uh, but you're running a uh, Windows machine? No. Oh, you yeah, you made your own Mac. A Hackintosh. Hackintosh. Yeah, yeah that's I awesome. Did. It took us. It took us uh, two weeks to me and my buddy Nico. It took us uh, two weeks to, you know. It only took us real, I mean, to put the machine together was quick. Yeah, physically. Yeah, but then doing all the codes and stuff like that to make it function properly where there's no errors. I mean, like, got it up. We're just like, okay, well, this is a little funky. Okay, let's fix that. Then we'd fix it. And then probably like about a week, two weeks later, it's like smooth as butter. We're like, yee. <laughs> like, nice. Like, I have no issues with it whatsoever. That's I'm, fantastic. I've never had it crash once. Yeah, I mean, once you get it up and running, I mean, that uh, Mac OS is just a fantastically stable operating system. Right. And then uh, what are you doing, Final Cut, or are you doing Adobe? I do a Final I do Final Cut. I have Adobe, but it's just like I'm just so used to the vi I, I'm used Visually, I'm used to Final Cut. Yeah. I, it's just like, I mean, I've, I've been pulled on a film as an editor before on, a, um, on Premiere. Yeah. You know, and I just was just like, okay, I'm going to have to keep you know, have to remember and adjust and all the key commands and all of this stuff. But, uh, 
I mean, I adjust fairly quick, but Final Cut is really like where I'm like, I'm like a madman through that thing. So nice, yeah. yeah. So it's such a complicated process. You really need to be like without you know second guessing anything where you're looking for different uh, functions and yeah how you operate you know so. i kind of like you know like say for instance some people have asked me about film before like say for instance editing or lighting and this and that and i always tell them i said listen don't start a project just shoot a fake one like yeah. pretend like you know before you even get started so you can get your lighting together like shoot like a scene make up some stuff you know, make up a scene, then go outside, then shoot at night. I go, because it's completely different. Your ISO is completely different at night. I said, you got to know how to adjust that, you know, and you got to deal with the light, you know, and I also tell them, you know, use the natural lighting that you have. Don't just black out the whole damn room. If you have, you know, lights coming through the windows and they're natural light and they look good, use them, take advantage of that. Yeah. Because it's going to save you a headache versus creating all this, you know, the fake lighting, you know. And um, I'm like, you know, work all of that out first before you put put your your baby, your script, your you know, into works. You know, work out the kinks first. You know, I always tell people that. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, I did um, my my first yoga video. I like was saying we were doing mm -hmm. nature videos, and, and uh, so we got the, our yoga and meditation series coming out. Uh -huh. And the first one that I finally like, I'm not even. I'm not happy with it, right? But I right. mean, it's good enough. But I had to, I had to do three different videos before I came back, and I was like, "This is finally like acceptable for my first one to be put out." But like the first two were just trash. I was fucking up left and right. Yeah. I was like, oh, "Okay, so next time when we go out, I won't do all this dumb shit I did." And then right. we go out again, and then I bring it back, and I'm like, "Yeah, but that doesn't work either." You know, uh -huh. and then it's like, so the third one, I was like, eh, close enough. Let's just fucking pump this thing out. You know, right. I can't keep saying it's not good enough and we'll move forward from there. But like, yeah, exactly. It's, it's a, it's a big like trial and error process of yeah. getting to know what you're doing. It's very, you know, it's, it's like part of it, you know, that's funny is that you, you mentioned it like the third one and you're just like, no, I have to put it out. That's enough excuses. It's got to go out. Like, yeah. you know, and then, and a lot of that is like, you know, some people call it, well, I'm a, they, you know, like excuses. I'm a perfectionist or this or that. And they never put out anything. And it's just like, you are a victim of your own destruction. Yeah. You know, because it's just like, if you don't put, you know, if you're scared of being criticized, then don't be an artist. Definitely. You know, and um, sooner or later, you have to let go of that project and let it breathe. You know, I hate to put it in like such a, you know, childlike, but you got to let it out in the universe and let it breathe. Yeah. And, and keep in mind, not everyone's going to like what you put out. You know, and that's okay because you cannot please everybody. You can't. There's no way. If you even get like 50% of people liking your stuff, then that's great. That's big. You know, <laughs> you know that's huge, <laughs> you know. So and it, you just got to do it for yourself and don't worry about like, oh, well, this isn't right or that, oh, uh, 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 you know, don't make excuses. Just do it. Just yeah. do it and put it out. And then the next one, you're going to learn from it. Because everything that I've shot, I've shot a lot of film, uh, short films, a lot of music videos and a lot of short films. And I every step I've learned. And like, say, for instance, I was shooting a 45-minute short film. This was back in, I want to say, I want to say 2010 maybe. No, I don't know. I'm not sure what the date is. But anyway, I shot this film and everything went wrong on set. Everything. My cast started being prima donnas. They start, eh, look at this small crew. And blah, 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 blah. Because oh. they were, they were, one of them was from uh, a hit TV show. Mm -hmm. She was, you know, and I told her, I said, listen, I said, this is like a, you know, a guerrilla style shoot. Are you okay with that? She's like, yeah, I've done them before. I'm cool with that. And then another one was from, you know, Canada, where she was on a big show up in Canada too. And, you know, I told her the same thing. It's a guerrilla style shoot. You know, are you okay with that? Yeah, I'm cool with that. But they got on set and they started being difficult and, you know, putting, oh, it's a small crew. Ooh, uh, uh, like just start doing like all of the stuff and really, really, really like put like a bad taste in my mouth. And I wanted to stop shooting. And my buddy Jeff was just took me to the side. And he was just like, no, we got to finish this. 
We got to push through this. We got to do this. And uh, that's Jeff Newman too. He's one of my long-term friends, and he, he's a great actor and writer, and he's an artist. And anyway, so we pushed through it. We finished the set, and we were done. And I was looking at the footage, and I was just like, oh, like I wasn't happy with, wasn't happy with it. So what I decided to do, I go, okay, you know, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make like a super trailer. It'll be three minutes long. It'll tell the story, and therefore it won't be a complete loss. Okay, so I cut it together, put it together, put it out, got great responses out of it. And the best response I got, because I just put it in my email, the YouTube link in my email, sent it to like everyone in my uh, contacts. And then what was awesome was a director um, that was directing a Cuba Gooding Jr. film got it. And he goes, hey, I really liked your, your short. He goes, I'm shooting a Cuba Gooding Jr. movie, and there's a part for it if you would like it. Wow. And I said, yes, definitely. He goes, great, I'll have production contact you. You know, So long story short, two weeks later, contact, got contacted by production. It was up between me and this other actor. But I'm a martial artist, and I do my, a lot of my own stunts. Oh, wow. So... They were like, it's your job to turn down. They said, if not, we're going to give it to this other actor. And I said, no, I'll take it. So things may turn out like in your shoot where they're just like, oh, this is a mess. This is, you know, this like because I mean, I invested a lot of money into this short film and I was really, really heartbroken. Like, oh, but at the end of the tunnel, I am going head to head with Cuba Gooding Jr. in a film called Line Watch. Line Watch. huh? Yeah, it's up. (laughs) And yeah, you can watch it. It's uh, it's up, and um, I'll put that in the uh, description as well. Like for sure, find a link to it. But you know that the moral of the story is just like you know what you, what I thought was going to be a total, you know, total mess, and I failed. I didn't fail because I, it was the tool that got me going to head to head with an Academy Award winning actor. That's amazing. Yeah. What a fantastic story that is, man. So, yeah. yeah. So, you know, going back to what we were talking about, it's just like, you know, when you got to, you got to let, you know, your projects, you got to let them go and let them breathe and let them, you know, let them all out in the universe, you know, because I really like, you know, what, what if someone says, oh, I really dug that song you wrote with me. Would you write with me on this song? You know? Or I really liked your voice on that. Or I liked your guitar playing on that. I liked your bass or this or that. You know, can you, you can be brought onto another project, could be bigger, you know, could go totally different direction. You don't know. And that's what the beautiful thing about art is. It's just like, you don't know where it's going to take you. It's, it's the magical journey and people don't look at it that way. Yeah, man. You know, so. I can stop by one. <laughs> no, it's been, no, it's fantastic and inspirational, man. I loved everything you were saying there, oh, and thanks. I and I totally agree with it all too. You know, uh, like yeah, this podcast, for instance. Then if you watch the first few episodes of this thing that I did, and it was just just trash, you know, it's like, but I said, fuck it, man. I'm putting it up anyways. The next one will be better, and the next one will be better than that. The next one will be better right. than that. Right, And eventually we got to the format where I do now, which I'm a little bit more proud of than, of course, the first few episodes. But there's still tons of room to grow. And I'll, I, keep, I'll keep developing it. I mean, this is great, man. I yeah. look at, I mean, you got like two seven, sure, 7B mics here. Like, I mean, like I've been to a podcast where it's just like it, it's just, I couldn't even tell you what mic I was speaking into. I'm like, yeah. what mic is that? Like, <laughs> it has it has its own cord attached to it. You know what I mean? Oh, God. Like, a quarter inch at the end. Yeah, it's just like, that's a quarter inch, isn't it? Like, uh, wow, okay. So, I mean, like, I, you you have it set up here. It's like, you know, whatever it, what, whatever it started at, where it's at right now, is, it's pretty serious, man. Thank like, you. Yeah, and I've watched, trust me, I watched your clips and stuff like that. And it's great, man. I think you're doing a good job. I think, you know, that's why I'm here. I'm yeah. just like, you know, Jason does what he's doing. He's, he's, you know, he's a good interviewer and, you know, a good dude. That's a, that's a number one, you know. Thank you, man. We met at a sound check. Yeah. You know, and you, you know. That could be in a, a tense environment, man. You yeah. don't know which way it's going to go. You know what's uh, cool about that? I'm going to have to give you props right now. Thank I'm you. I'm going to give you props. I'll take them. Yeah. Like, um, 
you are the you are cooler than a cucumber at sound checks. <laughs> I mean, like you know, I've yeah. done thousands of them, you know, and and it's just like you are cooler than a cucumber, and 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 like literally, out of all of the sound checks I've done too, that's one of the smoothest sound. No problem, I'll take care of it. I got it covered. That's you. Yeah. No problem. I'll take care of it. Not a problem. Not an issue. I got that. And I'm just like, wow. I'm just like this. Not, but that's another thing, though. You know what you're doing. You know what you're doing, but at the same time, you're zen. Yeah, baby. I love my zen practice. Uh huh. You're centered. I know it, and I sensed it. And I was just like, he's centered. He knows what's up. And uh, and it was really cool, you know. And it's just like you know, um, geez, I don't even. Um, but yeah, no, that was a smooth sound check, you know, even the little things and and even when cuz we were doing a I was singing with that Journey Tribute band, remember? Oh, that was awesome, yeah. And then I was I was the extra the guest vocalist that was coming on. And remember the the, the s- chaos that ensued at the yeah. end where he's like, "You just come sing the rest of the fucking set." <laughs> <laughs> uh, call it remember he was calling me from the from the stage and I was I was with you in the engineering booth. Yeah. And he's calling me. He's like, "Jimmy, why are you?" I'm like, "Oh, here I come. I running through the crowd." Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was just singing the last two songs, and he's like, he brought you up like halfway through the set and did most of the songs with them after right. a while, man. It was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah it was a lot. Yeah. I was. It was funny because I was walking off the stage and he was passing me, and he was like, "I'm gonna bring you up for more." And I'm like, and I was like, "Ha ha ha!" ha. Like I joked, I was laughing. I was like, "Hee hee!" You know, cool. Ha, huh? have a good. You know, have a good rest of your set. And then sure enough, he started calling me, and I was just like, "Whoa." <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was a fun show, man. Yeah, that was, was a big time fun show. Yeah, it was. fucking Rockstar Bar is dope. I really dig that new venue in town. We need more spots like that, man. Where... It's it's so, what's so great about not only the parking is amazing. Yeah, free parking, like, and it's like just what fifty feet from the door, hundred feet from the door. Yeah, and they got that huge dirt lot, so it's like, yeah. I, I mean, try to fill that up. You'll never fill that up, and then you'll. People be out the door in that place before you fill up the parking. Oh yeah, for sure. And then, um, and then also like you know, it's uh, you know, it's not like a hotel or a casino where you got to go through the maze of you know all the escalators or all of this. It's just like that rock. It's just a rock bar, and it's like come in and throw down, and and uh, it's really cool. You know, and then if you don't, like, you, let's say, for instance, okay, well, I want to, you know, talk a little bit. Let me go in the back. And you go in the back, the back area, you know, where it's not, you know, as loud. And you can, you know, talk with your friends, you know. Yeah, it's got a deep, uh, it's got a deep throw to it, man. Right. You know, so, and the, the PA is just big enough. It's not, it's not like overkill. You can get the vocals over the drums pretty cleanly, but right. you're not going to fucking destroy everybody's hearing right. with that system in there. And uh, no, I like it, man. It's yeah. cool. And the guys, the Stephen, uh, John, they're they're fantastic. The guys that own the place, and, right? Uh, yeah, it's so much fun. I'm glad that we got that venue in town. We lost a lot of them during the pandemic. We really man. did. And uh, so we need more spots like that coming around for man. sure. Yeah, but yeah, it's fun, man. I really like doing it. And yeah, uh, like you said, man, the. The beans in while you're doing the sound checks and and just hanging out, man, and and having a good time. That's what it's all about, man. Mm -hmm. Things can get so stressful in those places if you let them. And yeah, I mean, uh, it's just like you know, you gotta, you know, as a, you know, as a sound engineer, like you know, there's a lot of personalities coming through there, you know, and a lot of different energies. Oh yeah. And you, you know, you can't, you know, you can't let those things grab a hold of you or even like you know, attach themselves to you because. You know, it should be fun. Like, you know, it should be, you know, you should be, you know, like grateful that you're, you know, you're performing. You're, you're rec- you know, you're yeah. a performing artist. And, you know, and, you know, sometimes you get those people that are just a little bit too arrogant or too full of themselves or this or that, you know, and it's just like. You know, don't lose yourself with that. You know, they try to pull you in their own world, you know, the world one. Oh, yeah. They try to suck you into that and their own drama and this and that. And you're just like, no, I don't think so. I was just dealing with one. Oh, and, really? uh, <laughs> yeah. And it was just, it was, you know, it was fine. I, uh, I just let them talk. 
and then go, so here's the solution. It's not going to get better or worse than this, you know, so right. cry about it if you're going to or whatever, but like, this is what we're going to do. It's yeah. going to be fine. Yeah. You're going to be great, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and by the end of the night, they're just like, thanks, man. Sorry for being such a pain in your ass, you know, uh -huh. it's like, that was perfect. I didn't know. I was just like, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a, we're supposed to be having fun, man. Right. It's called playing. We're, we're right. up here to play. Like, right. It's just not to be taken so seriously. Right. So, have, a, have a good time, man. Yeah, it's fantastic to mm. get to do. It's such a privilege to get to do that job for a living, entertaining people. Yeah. Putting on music, man. Doing shows. What yeah. a fucking great. What a what a great way to exist. I, I mean, I mean, like, does it? It doesn't matter, like, if I'm doing my band show or if I'm, you know, hired gun guy or this or that. You know, um, my job is to, you know, this is what I always think. It's like my job is to put a memory in your head yeah, that you can drive home and think about and tell your friends about and be like, oh, we were at, let's say, for instance, it's the Rockstar Bar. Oh, we were at Rockstar Bar and this band was great and this and that and blah, 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 blah. You know, we danced and we had, we laughed and we did, you know, that's what it's about. Dancing, laughing, enjoying music, you know, and that's my job, you yeah. know, and that, and, and. I can't do that if I'm carrying all this drama and negativity on my back. Absolutely. And so many people want to throw that out there, you know, and, and make it about them and their fucking ego as opposed to just, like, having a good time and, like, let's all just work together and enjoy ourselves because, like, we do this so we don't have to have a real job. Right. Like, you know, I don't want to go out and, like, work a nine-to-five and, right. I, you know, so I, I sacrifice my schedule and I do all kinds of crazy hours and and we, we entertain people for a living and it's just a privilege. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah. You know, and, like, yeah, and those those people that come there to get that memory and, and that experience, you know, they spend all week long just grinding away at their jobs that a lot of them just can't stand to be at and right you you're know. there you're their escape yeah at the you, end of the week we give them something yeah that makes life worth living and to push through and go at least fucking saturday night i'm gonna right. go see a journey tribute band you know or right. i'm gonna go see the hell and backs uh -huh. kick ass on stage and uh and it's like that release man you know it's it's it makes it all worth it the cycle of the fucking endless weeks mm -hmm. that we're existing in. Breaks it up. Yeah. So, it's awesome, man. It's, yeah, I love it. So you said you're into martial arts too, right? Oh, yeah. What, well, do you, what, what, do you, what discipline of martial arts do you study currently? Well, um, I'm actually an instructor. I'm retired. Wow. Yeah, I'm a retired uh, MMA coach. Really? Yeah. Um, so definitely like Brazilian jiu-jitsu and stuff like that. Those are right? one of the arts yeah. that I studied, catch wrestling, um, boxing, Muay Thai. I, I come from, I actually, um, you know, I started training when I was nine, but then, you know, phased out a little bit. And then I came back and went back into boxing. Then, you know, I was introduced by um, I, Eric Paulson. He's a, he's a, one of the, uh, like way, way, way back, like back in the, 90s like he's one of the you know early guys uh he took me uh to uh he's like oh you should train where I'll tra where I train and it was uh the Inasano Academy in California and uh that's where I'm originally from California and uh Inasano Academy Dan Inasano was Bruce Lee's uh senior instructor oh cool so when Bruce Lee was away on set and doing all this stuff Dan Inasano uh, would teach all his classes and et cetera. And um, so I trained and fought for them. And then I became an associate instructor uh, there. And, um, but I, I retired a long, long time ago. I fought. And then I opened up my own, I had two schools in, in California. I had one in uh, East LA and then another one in Woodland Hills. And, um, and, uh, you know, um, I still have fighters that are still fighting in, you know, they're pros and successful and, you know, you know, UFC and all of that stuff. Um, so, and then, I, I mean, I still train too over at Syndicate MMA. Like, um, 
I was working over there for a little bit just to, you know, um, just because, you know, you miss it, you know? So I was working yeah. over there and I was training a few fighters over there and, uh, working with John Woods over there. Um, but you know, um, that's, that's basically, uh, you know, um, where I, you know, train out of right now. Um, when I can, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, um, uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, I stopped, I can't, I'm trying to think, ten, about nine, nine, ten years ago, I stopped training fighters. Uh, right. Like, as a, as a, you know, my school, I shut my school down, it's both of them, and, you know, I, you know, broke, put the team, you know, spread them out to different people, and they all went, you know. So, it's been about, like, nine, ten years. That's impressive, though, yeah. man. I didn't know. You're, you're such a well-rounded individual, man, a man of many talents. That's no. amazing. Yeah. No. Well, I mean, like, you know, like I said earlier, you know, like, like, like it's all about the arts for me, and that's what makes me happy as yeah. a human being, you know? So it's all about the arts. And as long as I'm creating in some form, you know, even taking pictures, you know, photography. even. I love photography. Yeah. Like, it's just like... You know, all of that stuff, you know, that's what makes me happy. And that's what makes me, you know, that's what my soul needs. You know? Yeah, that's what we're supposed to be doing when we're here, man. Yeah. It's, this is just a game we're playing. It's right. like, have fun with it. Right. Be creative. Love life. All right. It was so, you know, one quote that I, a friend of mine, Eddie, back when I was in, I, uh, I was in acting school. I studied at Lee Strasberg's uh, Film and Theater and in, in uh, West Hollywood, California. And my friend Eddie said one thing t that it just, I've kept it. And he doesn't even remember saying it. And I have to remind him every now and then. I haven't talked to him in a while. But, you know, he said that, he, he said that I'd rather have a full soul and, an empty, and empty pockets versus full pockets and an empty soul. That's beautiful. Oh, yeah. That's and so, so true. I, oh, yeah. And, like, I, I was all like, wow. You know, I, he said that the first day I met him, and because they were uh, Sally, uh, what's her, Sally Kirkland, uh, she she's a big acting coach, and she was a big ac actress. Um, she was going around the room and asking everybody, "Why are they here? And you know, what's what's their goals? And what do they want? You know, what brought them here? You know, and that was part of it because he was doing a production job where he was behind the camera." And he was making tons of money, but he wasn't happy. Yeah. He wasn't acting in front of the camera like he should. So, yeah, I'm trying to transition myself back out onto the stage again, man. You know, I was a musician my whole life and right. uh, I loved playing, you know, but it wasn't quite the, um, it wasn't providing me the lifestyle I, I thought that I should be living. And uh -huh. so I, transitioned into the engineering thing it's a really stable career and i make right. good money right and uh but after a while you know it's like chasing the money i you know i ended up cutting my hair off shaving my face and like i am right now doing the this corporate thing which i like doing the corporate thing man and the, and the money's great but it's not the creative process it's not the artistic nature that i have always really been driven by right and so and yeah now i'm starting the process of reverting back and transitioning myself back into being a full-time artist and trying to get my my income to be uh generated in that manner as opposed to just engineering all the time here's the balance yeah like yeah balance. i'll probably still engineer because i love it yeah yeah but i mean I but there's be, there's know? an art to that too though oh, like yeah. people don't you know people don't think don't trust me there's an art to that oh, because it's is. just like you know <laughs> if you want to we won't get into it but like you know frequencies yeah you know if you don't know frequencies and you can't mix, you're not going to mix nothing, you know? <laughs> um, the only thing you're going to mix up yeah. is what you're going to do. Make it really loud. Yeah. So, you know, there's an art, art, art form to that too. You know, mixing, editing, all of that stuff. I'll tell you this much. Like, I mean, mixer, like engineers along with editors have saved more records and films than anybody in the world. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know I've saved my my fair share of records, that's for sure. Right. You and know. live shows. <laughs> you know? It becomes a disaster sometimes. People can fuck up 
That job so fast. Yeah. It blows my mind, man. Yeah. All from overcomplicating things, too. A lot of times, like, I'll come in and they're just like, man, I can't believe whatever, you know, you saved it. And I just flatten everything back out and set everything to zero and, like, throw some high-pass filters on. And Yeah. I don't do anything, you know? I just right. use, like, some bare-bones basic stuff, you know, pull all their garbage, you know, let's turn every knob. Right. And it's just like, and you bring it up, and it's just like, yeah, there it is, yeah. you know. And I did nothing special. I'm not special. I'm not doing anything, anything that that required any level of like advanced knowledge, uh -huh. you know. But like people get in there and start fucking everything. One studio, I, I one of the early earlier studios I was in, I had the pleasure of working with tape. And as long as in watching the world go to digital. I, love, I, I transitioned my, my entire career kind of transitioned yeah. through that phase, man. Yeah. So I'm really on both sides of it. I can I yeah. love it. So um, there was one sticker in a, in a studio that I've always laughed at. And it was like, it's it read, keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. And it was just like, wow, okay. And it, and it, and it resonated. You know, yeah. The one I'm always saying is, uh, it's rock and roll, not rocket science. <laughs> That's yeah. a good one. I like yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> we're just fucking making it loud, man. You know, and um, I, I came up in the House of Blues right out of college. Oh, okay. And um, and coming out of of college as an engineer, I just knew way too many dumb tricks you know like i would stay after class and sit in on sessions and i'd learn all these little weird things that all this this variety of different engineers were doing and everybody has their own little tricks that they throw in and right. some people go that's fucking stupid some people right. go you know it's that's amazing what they're doing but so you 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 start filling this bag full of tricks right and I went to House of Blues and started randomly implementing these things, not really knowing where to put them. But I was like, I'm going to try them all the time. Right. And the musicians who, like some of the guys at the House of Blues, are very talented engineers. They mix very well. And some of us were dumbass kids who yeah. were, were cutting our teeth. And so they, they would just call me out on all my bullshit. And they'd be like, hold the fuck. I remember one time uh, the guitar <laughs> player for Purple Rain. He just goes, hold the fuck on. And he shuts everybody up and he hits his guitar a couple times and he walks for He goes, what are you doing to my guitar, man? <laughs> you know? <laughs> what is, the, that's not what it's saying. I can hear my amp. That's not what it sounds like. Right. You know? He goes, you think my, you know what my guitar is supposed to sound like better than me? Oh, and wow. I was like, oh, and I was, I was EQing it all up and like over compressing, doing all this dumb right. shit to it because there's knobs there and it's my job to turn all of them. Right? <laughs> it's like, no, they're there when you need them. Right. They're there when you need them. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And so now, like, you know, like I was saying, like with guitar, it's like fucking roll the lows off and bring it up. And, mm -hmm. like, the guitar player knows what his guitar is supposed to sound like. He's yeah. giving you what he wants it to sound like, you know? Right. And, and like, funny. oversimplifying it all I, uh, changed my whole life. But, yeah, it, was, it, it can be a total fucking mess if but you, you make kinda, it. But you, believe it or not, though, you kind of got, you have to mess up to be good. Oh, yeah. You have to make mistakes to be good. Yeah. Because... That's when you're not, not to do that. Don't do that again. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was, you know what I mean? That. But then, but then you have like these beautiful messes too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where you're just like, oh, I'm, that one's going in the bag of tricks. Yeah. You know? You stumble on them sometimes. Yeah. And there's, and the thing about it is just like, you know, uh, uh, producers say this all the time. There's really no rules. Crank it up if you want. Go ahead. Yeah. I said it's your ear is the is really the judge, you know, and jury. But uh like, you know, there's really no rules because it's just like crank it up. Oh, if you feel like it needs to go here, then dig it there. Just try it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah. You know? Like every album sounds completely different from every other album, even if it's the same band. You right. know, there's always this variety of, of of level variants going on and the EQs are always different and right. it's just it's like every project, every album, every song even is its own entity, you know, and there's no formula of like, well that's the right way to do it. It's right. it's art, man. Yeah. It's, it's just just it's a, a 
point of preference, really, yeah. a lot of the times. And so it's like, yeah, fuck everything up, you know, experiment and have fun with it. Yeah. Um, we right? did like, like, I mean, the Hellenbecks, we did like on our first record, like basically I barely had enough equipment to do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was the first record. And then the second record, it was just like, okay, well, like I got a hold of this uh, quarter inch Akai reel to reel. Oh, cool. You know what I mean? And so then we started like, you know, okay. And then I bought this, I, I, I rebought an old console that I had. And it, so basically it was a really warm console, um, uh, Panasonic Ramza. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. You don't see those very often. Right. So I had one of those. And so basically on the second record, we ran everything through there, bounced it down, then took it to the quarter inch. You know, and it sounds completely different than the other one. You know, it's a, you know, um, and then the third one, the studio was just, you know, I, it, I wouldn't even call it a studio until the third record because then the real studio came in and kicked in and, you know, it's just like every album sounds different. Yeah. You know, every album sounds different, so. And you never would have gotten to that third record and the way it sounds if mm -mm. you hadn't have done the second and the first record the mm -mm. way you did, you know? It's this growth process. Right. Like, I mean, like my old studio back in California, like, you know, before I, you know, sold it, you know, it was, you know, Pro Tools and that Ramza board that I told you about. And then, um, you know, uh, the mics were a lot different. Like, you know, only like, Four or $500 mics, you know, and then like, you know, uh, you know, drum rooms were the mics on there, you know, or whatever you can get a hold of. But, oh, yeah. you know, and then like nowadays it's completely polar opposite. Now it's like, okay, well, it's, you know, Sennheiser's on the toms. And then, you know, you got, you know, the, the, the proper kick drums and, pr and different snares different kick drums, you know, different sizes, you know, now it's big old variety, tube mics and, you know, <laughs> tube compressors. Yeah, dude, changing the snare out per song, you know, like the, yeah. the snare in a song is so crucial. I mean, right. And as far as like mix level, it's like almost right there with the vocal and it has so much character and like, uh, I don't know, responsibility for the drive of the song. And it's like, right. Just swapping those snare shells. I mean, right. you don't you don't have to use the same snare for the whole album, or or do use the same snare yeah, for the whole album. Can. That's always fun too. But it's like there's that, you know, it's like changing tunings for a guitar and you're changing right. your amplifier around. You know, it, right. it makes such a huge difference. The different the variety of snare. Yeah, drums. like the main snares I use are Black Beauty, a Ludwig Black Beauty, and uh, um, Copper Phonic, Ludwig Copper Phonic. I'm a big Ludwig fan, um, but like, I like to use the copper phonic on a on a high, higher pace songs because it cuts through a little bit better. The the black beauty is a little thicker and bigger. It's more of a boom. Yeah, like it's more you know gunshot. It's, yeah, and then uh, so I like to use the copper phonic on a on a faster paced song, you know, so it pops and cuts right through. Yeah, you know, has sort of a fa uh, faster transient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so. Yeah, it's 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 amazing how how much fun you can get experimenting with uh, all that kind of stuff when you have the time and the resources to do so. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, growing up we had like the little four track. Oh yeah, and you know we had like T two microphones to run through it, and it was just like whatever we could come up with to make shit sound shit, halfway yeah, decent. Yeah. Tascam. Yeah, I had the Tascam four track, and then I and then my dr drummer of my band had. The Fostex four track. Oh, nice. So yeah. then you link them up, right? You do four tracks and then you send those oh. four tracks to one or two tracks on the yeah. Fostex. Bounce. Bounce them back and forth. You yeah. Know, that's, I think that's how the Beatles did uh, Sgt. Pepper, man. They bounced that, a lot, yeah. That whole record is amazing and so much going on and they were doing it with a pair of four tracks. <laughs> right. It's amazing, but, do, but you know what? There's a picture like on the internet that shows their four track and it literally looks like military gear. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They it's, didn't have faders. They had giant rotary. Uh, oh, it's huge. Or all well, the potentiometers, as it were, because it's analog gear. Yeah. It was crazy. Like, I mean, you look at it, and you're like, this looks like stuff that belongs in a tank. Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. Freaking Les Paul was, like, building them from scratch out of tube gear. You know? <laughs> it's just, like, fucking incredible where we've come from. And now you just 
plug your laptop in with a USB interface right. and you're good to go and you have every fucking kind of plug in you can imagine and you can auto tune it. Right. And you know And then you got garage band on your phone. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that a trip? <laughs> it's just amazing. And you can just do so many tracks on your f- cell phone. Right. Like what the hell, you know? And, and I know it's ridiculous. The Beatles are just struggling through it and their and their shit sounds a million times better right. than anything we're doing on these digital platforms. And you're just like, how? How? Right. Oh, and I love all the old mics from back in the day. Yeah, too. well, it's being the, held up by springs and yeah, giant, you know, it's just like it's ridiculous. The old mics are proprietary power interfaces and they no XLR. It's all just every kind of cable you had to like cut the ends off and splice it onto the channel. This is ridiculous. Wow. Wow. Well, yeah. yeah, that was totally, totally different. Totally different than now. You know what I mean? Like now you got USB mics. Yeah, and they sound great. <laughs> yeah, which is just amazing. I have um like a a Yeti Blue, oh I mean, yeah, a Blue Yeti, and uh, and the thing's phenomenal, man. And it has like all the control for like I use it for you know doing like Zoom meetings or like live streaming and stuff like that. And, mm-hmm. and it has all your little control right, right. on the microphone. And you okay, got, you know you're let's, pretty good to go. Let's talk. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna give you I'm gonna ask you a question. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay, for the the artist that's bega- basically building their home studio, they have a computer, they have a small little interface to record. What mic do they get overall? Your suggestion? SM fifty seven, right? I mean, I don't even have to think about that. Every SM fifty seven all day. Yes, all yes. day. Because the I mean, what's the difference between the SM fifty seven, the instrument mic, and the SM fifty eight, the vocal microphone that you see everybody using? The grill. Uh-huh. There's That's no it. difference. It's the same dynamic moving coil, and it it sounds identical. Yeah. And, but that's the most versatile mic on the market, and you can still. Yeah. And when was it created? Fuck, like the '60s. <laughs> it was in the '60s sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just an amazing microphone, and it's still the same mic, man. I mean, there's new versions. I think it's on like the the C or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like 57C, but yeah. it's uh, it's the same microphone, and it's just a gorgeous mic. And you can do everything with and it. And you can get them for eighty nine dollars. Yeah, we're yeah. here to teach. We're here to teach you, folks. We're that's here to teach right. You. We're here. We're we're giving lessons here. Yeah. We're giving like you know. That's that's what I started with. Is I, and I still have it. I only had the one fifty seven because right. I ended up expanding my my collection around it. Uh-huh. But that was that was the beginnings of it. it was an SM fifty seven, a small interface, and a laptop, and uh, and it was fucking terrible <laughs> but i was getting stuff done you know and learning learning the basics and then moving up to you know eight channels and 16 channels and um and i and i ended up cutting my teeth big time like doing a lot of live multi-tracking like uh-huh. live multi-track audio for live bands and and uh wow sessions and stuff like that. oh okay oh yeah okay. i think you meant like live at the club i was just like oh wow yeah no at the clubs yeah and uh and then i started doing like live concert footage synced up with multi-track audio and room mics and all this stuff that's, that's, and like that's a big production right there. it's a it's a lot to handle man yeah. and uh but that was where i really Ha- ended up getting a lot of experience. I wanted to do the studio thing. Uh-huh. And I did a bunch of studio stuff for sure. And I still, I mean, we're sitting in my recording studio right, right now. But uh, but that ended up being ultimately because I was always out doing the live sound thing. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of just started incorporating it to make extra money. Nice. And uh, and yeah, a lot of fun. A lot mm-hmm. you can learn. And then like the beautiful part about that whole process is if you got the preamplifiers and the and the, the interface, you know, with the the computer, then it's like you don't need any of the microphones or anything. You're just taking direct lines from the club that you're in. Right. And so you can get your sources and your you know everything, and you just then you you just mix. You yeah. Know, you get to learn how to mix a lot faster. Right. So yeah, it was fun. And uh, yeah, I just. Uh, I like doing it because it's one and done. You're, you know, second chances. So you got to be on your freaking game, man. Yeah. And then I've, and I have, I've fucked up some, you know, in the beginning. It's like, oh shit, I missed the first 30 seconds uh-huh. of the song, you know, or the first 30 seconds of the show because I'm like checking everything and then they just go and you're just like, oh, okay, well, oh, record, record. That was funny that you said one and done because when we shot the, the film, the footage for the film, the live, the, the concert footage, the performance of it, on the the Helen Backs three film, um, we basically did one and dones. Like there was two songs that we we let's do that one again. 
but that was it. No more than two takes. Yeah. Like, and, and two takes on two of the songs and the rest of the 13 were like, you know, so I, sh I did a five camera shoot. Nice. That's a lot of work. Yeah. So I had to light it and, you know, it was, you know, but you, you reminded me about the, the one and done. I was just like, oh yeah, that one and done. That was right. You know, we only read, we only redid like, uh, two songs. And one of them was, it was funny because like, you know, I wear makeup on stage and what happened was my makeup artist, um, I only told her to go so high. She was just like, are you going to, uh, Zena Foley is my makeup artist. Let me just put that out there right now. She's amazing. You can go on her Instagram and watch her do her face, body paint and all that stuff. She's amazing. Like, pull up one of her Is it uh, with an X? Zena? No, oh, or Z. Zena. Uh, Zena. Uh, S. I. S. S I N A. I was nowhere near that. Zena. <laughs> I always say it wrong because uh, I say it nasally. But uh, full, there, yeah, I, there you I go. I was pull thinking up. Zena Warrior Princess. Oh, yeah. I called her I called her Zena for a really, really long time as a wow, joke. Oh, look fun. at these things. Look at how she's amazing. That's incredible. And now here's another thing, you know, being multi, like talented, she is an amazing singer. Oh yeah. Yeah. So um Let's see if I can find some more cool ones. While yeah. I so we used to uh we used to do an all request band um at the Golden Nugget all the time. So Oh, here's some cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, very, um, oh, God damn it, Salvador Dali. Yeah, Salvador Dali. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, she's awesome. So, um, oh, nice. But, yeah, like, like, say, for instance, the reason why was I only told her to paint up to my hat, and then in the middle of a take, I took my hat off. And so you saw this like white piece of my forehead ah. and I was just like, ah, oh, we got to retake that one. So it was just like, you know, little things like that. But other, other than that, the, there was nothing wrong with the other guy's performance or anything like that. It was just, was so. awesome. look at this friggin' dragon she did too. Oh yeah. Wow. That was, that one's one Is of my a favorites. Painting? Is that her? That's her, huh? That's her. She painted that. That's one of my favorites. She's How cool. Yeah. So how freaking cool. Yeah, let me see if I can find some of uh, the stuff you're painted as on. on oh, there. yeah, no, you won't see that. She no. didn't post it up. No, I'm, I'm just going to look on your page. I don't know if you have any of that posted on your Instagram with your face painted. Um, I think there is a couple shots. Yeah? Yeah. Let's see if we can find it, too. But, yeah, I love that whole um, the whole addition of, of adding, like, the makeup and the mm. costumes and everything when you're performing live. I mean, it's a big deal, man. It adds a lot of... Uh, it adds a lot of vibe to the performance, man. You know, you yeah. kind of want to present yourself as a little bit more grander than life, a little bit more than just right. your average person being on stage as the performer. Mm. And uh, oh, here we go. Oh yeah, there. Yeah, there's one. Yeah, that's nice. from. That was from Vamped. That was the CD release party. That's awesome. Yeah. I love the uh, the shirt too, man. That's that's dope. Yeah, I mean, like it's a very it's a. The album's pretty theatrical, I guess you could say. So, um, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, man. So. Well, you know what? I think we've been going for over yeah. an hour. Yeah. I said I'd get you out of here at an hour, Mark. Let's get you out of here, man. Right. And how about uh, I'll play this music video we have for sure, as well. Man. We'll close with the video. For sure. I mean, thank you for having me. I mean, seriously, like, I didn't even... I was just like, oh, wow. I looked at the time. I was like, wow, we've been chatting it up for a yeah, while. <laughs> it's fun, man. It's you know? fun. It's a good it, time. Thank you. It, Thank you so much. It's my pleasure, man. Thank yeah. you for being on the show. Yeah. And uh, let me go through a few things, right? We got JimmyRomero.com. We got the HelenBax.com. Mm -hmm. You have the Jimmy Romero YouTube channel. And uh, check out Alex in Wonderland. Alex in Wonderland. Yeah, yeah. A-L-E-X in Wonderland. Uh, the new movie coming out uh, soon. I don't think we have an actual. We don't release have an date. actual release date. We did have one, but now it's been pushed back. So uh, just check on IMDb for the updates on the release date. And, you know. Awesome. Yeah. 
Uh, awesome. And I'll also, uh, you know, when it does come out, send me the link. Man, I and I'll post it on uh, our social media as well. I'll give you a shout out and, you know, promote the video as well for you. Man. I will. And mm-hmm. then what else did you said? Line Watch, right? With Cuba Gooding Jr. That's yeah. Well, watch, yeah that's watch a... Jimmy Act with yeah. Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah, yeah sure. That's yeah, so cool. That. So, yeah, man. So, thank you again, Jimmy Romero, for being on the podcast. And uh, this has been To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Uh, please subscribe, give us a like, ring the bell, follow us on social media, follow Jimmy on social media. And uh, all the links will be in the description below. Yeah. Peace. Uh, oh, the music video. The music video. I said I was going to do a music oh, video at the okay. end. <laughs> Here it comes. I play it loose.
Thanks for watching To The Fullest with Jason Froberg. You can check out more podcasts here and subscribe by clicking right here. We air new podcasts every Monday morning on Space Brain Station and all of your favorite podcast apps.